Hi, I'm John Rooksby, and I'll be presenting our paper, Design Opportunities for Digital Men's Health. The area of men's health recognises that men face unique challenges and experience health in particular ways. In the UK, men in the middle age are twice as likely as women to have diabetes and twice as likely not to know they have diabetes. In South Korea, there have been significant increases in obesity among males, but not among females. In Australia, men between the age of 25 and 64 are twice as likely to die than women. And in high income countries, including the USA, the suicide rate among men is three and a half times that of women. Men's health is not claiming that men have it worse than women, they do not, but that they experience health problems in different ways. The issue here with men's health is uh, that men are more likely to engage in risky behaviours, including alcohol misuse and having a poor diet. Men are also much less likely to seek help. For example, the weight loss programme Slimming World is effective but only about 5% of participants in that programme are men. The major factor here, the major determinant in men's health is not biological, it's social and cultural. Masculinity rather than biology explains why men take and are exposed to risks and often do not seek help. In the words of Steve Robertson, the process of being or becoming a man usually negatively influences men's health practices and outcomes. Men's health is not necessarily negative, and many health programs have been trying to harness positive masculinities in order to encourage men to lead healthier lifestyles. For example, several programs have been drawing upon men's interest in sports, in particular in the UK football. Programs such as Man v Fat offer similar things to programs such as Slimming World. You can get weighed. You can get advice on healthy eating, but this is done at football clubs with other football fans, and afterwards you can have a game of football. Programs such as Imagine Your Goals enable men to talk about mental health in the safe space of the football stadium among other football fans. Programs such as Football Fans in Training also enable men to go to their local football club and to be given health advice by football fans. Football fans, sorry, by football coaches. Football fans in training in particular has been shown to be effective, not just over the short term, but to have positive health outcomes over the long term for fans as well. In this study, we've been interested whether similar things can be achieved via technologies. Can football-related technologies be designed to engage men in healthier lifestyles? To explore this question, we've done an exploratory study. We've used four focus groups. We held these on site at two football clubs in England. The participants were 18 middle aged male football fans. During the focus groups, we asked open ended questions about football and health, and we also discussed several prototypes as well. In this presentation, I'll be focusing on the open questions about football and health. The findings from the focus groups really underscored the importance of football within these male football fans' lives. P15 said, it's in the blood. I eat it, drink it and sleep it. It's everything. Similarly, P11 said, it's a feeling of belonging, you know. It's more than a club. It's a sort of everything. It was friendships. It was social relationships that the men really seemed to value. It was being able to spend time other fans that really underscored all of the underlaid, all of the narratives that we had. So for example, P1 explained that when you get to high school, you knock around with your friends who have similar interests and it's always football. And these friendships from school were often the friendships that the men then had for life. P13 explained, I think when you get to our age, you don't get to see your friends that much anymore. That's a big part of it for me, like seeing my friends, so going to the football to see your friends. P5 said, there are a lot of people who sit together here and only come together on a match day. The participants said they wouldn't normally talk about health very much with their friends. P15 thought they might talk about the gym sometimes alongside other topics such as serious football or betting. P3 said, blokes tend to hide their mental health in particular 
the participants thought they would never talk about mental health. The narratives about being a football fan were actually pervaded by accounts of negative health behaviours, in particular alcohol use. So P5 explained about this, it's a social event and alcohol is very much linked to the match day. And P12 explains, I think it's more the fact, it's not the fact of getting drunk, it's the fact of socialising with your pals, have a drink. If your team wins, that's a bonus, isn't it? Most of the participants had some experience with healthy lifestyle programs being run at their football clubs. P12 explains a slimming world that there you have weighing scales, but none of the incentive. It was the programs being run at football stadia that the participants were really interested in. P3 explained of a program that he'd participated in that they were buzzing. Even when we were lying outside in the horrible, dirty terraces and doing push ups, you still felt motivated because it was your team. You felt like part of it. P11 explains that it felt safer going to these events at stadiums. He said, if you're going to go to a group that is run from a stadium and you're a fan of the club, you're probably thinking, well, I have something in common with some of the people there at least. So you know you can go and talk about football. Whereas if you go to a gym, nobody likes going to a gym, especially if you're overweight. P11 talked about how you can form new friendships at these healthy lifestyle programs. He said, it's a different type of social circle. So I've got my friends I go to the pub with and stuff like that. But this is the only group now I've got where actually it's not let's go for a drink. It's more like let's go and do some boxing. P9 talked about the long term. He said four, five, six months later, we've still not gone for a pint. I don't think there's anyone going to have a beer here, but we've then done other things as a social group, activities and things. They were doing things like badminton, that group. Our study revealed several implications for design. So firstly, digital health technology for men's health could tap into fandom and the love of the game. This would be a form of emotional design for encouraging engagement with health technologies. This area shouldn't try and change behaviours on match days, or at least that would be hard to do and would be rejected by fans, especially if it tries to damage friendships. So perhaps try and target non-match days. Design could be for the love of the club that men have, but also the joy of being with other football fans. One thing we should not assume is that fans identify with or respect the players on their team. They in fact get a lot more pleasure in spending time with the fans. Design in this area could be to support social relationships. We should recognise that fandom forms a basis for social ties and friendships. So digital men's health technology might be centred on communication and mechanisms for social organisations such as meeting up with other people. This should be to foster care and relationships between fans rather than rivalries between different teams. We could think about augmenting the existing healthy lifestyle programs. Technology could be used to help maybe help these programs reach further into the global fan bases. Perhaps technologies could ex extend, be used to extend programs temporarily, so over a longer period of time, or to help make the programs, the changes from the programs more sustainable. We do need to consider masculinity in this area and we should not assume that designing for masculinity means we should be supporting the masculine ideals such as strength and stoicism. In fact, we should be trying to do the opposite, so encouraging men to do things like seek help and to take fewer risks in their lives. We should design for positive masculinities, for example, by focusing on caring masculine relationships such as friendships. We should not assume that this design for masculinity is about the creation of men-only apps. It isn't, but it's about technology that should positively impact men's health. Thank you for listening. This work was funded by the Get and Move On Network, which was in turn funded by EPSRC.